Hey everybody, it's Peter and it is April 2023. We are almost at scooter season here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And in this video, I'm gonna compare two entry-level scooters from Piaggio. So this is the Piaggio Typhoon 50 and the Piaggio Liberty S. And both of these are 2023 models. They're both 50 cc's, they're both entry-level. And I'm gonna talk about a lot of the differences between the two so that you can make a decision for yourself. Now, if you wanna know more about these uh, scooters, I will have them back on video again and again, and I can do that because I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, and I have complete access to their entire vehicle lineup here, so if there's anything that you wanna know about these that I don't cover in this video, make sure you subscribe, let me know in the comments what you wanna know, and I'll come back to it to answer your questions both in the comment section and in future videos. So let's get going with this review. So let's just start with why 50cc scooters. Well, here in New Brunswick, you don't need a full motorcycle license to drive these. If you have a car license, you can do that. And if you're 14 years old, you don't have to wait till you're 16 to get licensed and out on the road because you can ride a test and be out on these as well. So 50cc scooters really offer you a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility, and a lot of simplicity. If you wanna add an extra vehicle to your life, these are great for that. And of course, they're extremely efficient. There are two models from Piaggio. We also sell Vespa scooters here. So there's a lot of uh, options that you may wanna go around, but these are basically our entry level scooters. They're the lowest cost and uh, they kind of do everything you need to do to get them around, but there are some key differences. So the first thing I wanna point out is just the seating of them both. Uh, I'm about six feet tall. These are up on the center stand. So that means the rear wheel is off the ground. They're gonna appear taller than they actually are, but it does allow you to sit with both feet off the ground. So if you're a shorter person, you can stand here and stand across this. It's not a problem. If you're a taller person, they're not too tall. But what's cool about these little tiny little scooters is even at six feet tall, you can see I've got tons of room here. I've got lots of room to be taller than I am and they're both capable of taking passengers. So we'll talk about the passenger capacity a little bit later, but you can see sitting here on the Typhoon, very, very comfortable. And I have a very, very similar seating position over here on the Liberty. So we're gonna talk about some of the differences. The Liberty is the slightly more expensive model and you can decide if that's worth it for you. There's different features on each of these that may make it worth it or may, may, may not make it worth it for you, but they're both pretty close in price. So basically for most of them, if one of them is affordable, the other one's probably just as affordable and it really comes down to choosing the one that's best for you. So you can see, again, you can take a passenger here, lots of space, even if you were taller than me, you'd have plenty of room. So let's dig into some of the differences between these two. And we're gonna start over in the front wheel work our way back and then work our way across the top. We'll talk about storage, because both of these have storage underneath the seat. And we're gonna talk about the dash and some of the features in there. So let's start with the front wheel right over here. So taking a look at the front wheel here of the Liberty 50cc scooter, this is the slightly more expensive model than the Typhoon but I think you can sort of start to see some of the differences in that pricing right up front here. So first of all, you have a larger diameter wheel. So what that means is from here to here, this is a larger wheel. A typical sport bike has a 17 inch diameter wheel. This is a 16 inch diameter wheel. So it's pretty big for a scooter. And just for reference, a Vespa has something like a 12 inch wheel. Uh, the other one that we're gonna look at has a 14 inch wheel here. The Typhoon has a 14 inch wheel. So right away, you've got a little bit of a larger wheel here which gives you a little bit of a different angle here for certain types of bumps, but it is a narrower tire than the Typhoon. We'll talk about that when we get there. Overall, on some of the Vespas, you don't have the extra fork tube here. You have everything on this side here, but you still have a way to show off the wheel here. So this is a traditional fork, very similar to a motorcycle. And really that's what both these are. They're very similar to motorcycles in a lot of ways. One thing that I kind of like here is you have this really nice paint color here that comes around there and this is painted on the Typhoon, it's not. And then down in here again, you have that body color um, protection down there as well. So again, a little bit higher end. As far as brakes go, 50cc scooters, they're not going crazy, crazy fast. You don't need crazy brakes, but these are way above spec for what you would need. So these are ventilated discs. They're two caliper or two uh, piston caliper. So traditional motorcycle brakes is what you would get here. And uh, you know, basically very good stuff. The traditional look of a disc here with drilled rotors right here, circular drilled rotors. We're gonna go over to the Typhoon now and you're gonna start to see some of the differences. So over here on the Typhoon, again, the same basic setup. Your disc is in the back. I don't know if you can see the disc very well. Instead of having the drilled rotors, it's kind of like a slotted rotor, but again, that's all about cooling. And to be honest, it's probably more about style on a 50cc scooter. These are not, you know, you know, 200 horsepower sport bikes. They have uh, brakes that are as much about style as they are about performance, and they work very well. 
So here we have a 14 inch diameter wheel, but the difference is that one on the, the previous one we showed you is about a, a 90 millimeters wide, I think. Oh, now I better double check. Yep, 90 millimeters wide. This one is about 120. So this one is a 14 inch rim with a wider, uh, wider tire. So it's 14 inch by 120 wide. And this one has the same size tires front and rear. So the exact same tire here could be mounted to the back. On the Liberty, it's a totally different tire. That's also a 14 inch. So remember, it had a 16 inch, now it's a 14 inch back there, and it is still narrower, about 100 uh, millimeters wide. This is 120 wide, so it's still narrower than these wheels. So what you have here on the Typhoon is a little wider tires, an equal size front and rear, and on the, on the uh, Liberty, a little bit narrower tires with that larger diameter front wheel, but again, narrower. So just something to keep in mind, depends on what you want. These ones, some people are gonna like, some people like the really large uh, looking front tire on the Liberty, but that is some of the differences. And then again, here, you have a regular plastic and a regular plastic here. It is painted on the side, but in the back area there, you just have that uh, matte plastic finish, and that's kind of the way it looks. So as we take a look at the drive system of both of these scooters, you're gonna see a lot of similarities. Now the Piaggio does have, or sorry, the Piaggio, the Liberty here does have some advantages. It says Piaggio right here. I don't know if that's an advantage, but that is one difference here. And you have a little different airbox in here. Now the biggest difference between these two powertrains is that this one is fuel injected and that one is carbureted. Now most modern motorcycles these days are fuel injected and they do that for a couple reasons. One, emissions. Emissions is the big reason and uh, this one probably has a higher emission standard than the carbureted one but it is still at least Euro 4 at the, um, at the minimum and a lot of these are Euro 4, Euro 5 in that range. So they're still fairly good with emissions but fuel injection allows you to have a little bit more of a variance in you know, equal performance in cool weather, warm weather, high altitude, low altitude, that kind of thing. So it is an advantage here in both fuel efficiency and in theory in performance. Now there's not a huge performance difference between the two, but it is something to remember that this one is a little better. But there are a whole bunch of other little differences here. So even though this looks kind of the same, you've got the same kind of pieces and parts in here. This one has a little plug right here. That one has a little kickstarter right there. You don't need to kickstart that one. They're both electric start, but it does have the option on the Typhoon there to have that. You'll also notice the difference in the springs here. This one is a much longer spring than you have on the, uh, and shock than you have uh, on the Typhoon. And this one's what's called a variable rate uh, spring. So what that does is it's gonna be a little bit better at absorbing smaller bumps as well as larger bumps where that one's gonna be sort of a standard rate spring. Technically, this is a little bit better piece. So again, you can start to see some of that differentiation with the fuel injection, with a slightly different shock in here on why there's a difference between the two. Again, both of these are 14 inch wheels on the back side, and uh, that one has a little bit wider wheel on the Typhoon. But those are some of the little differences right there. So let's talk about passenger capacity. Now again, these are 50cc bikes, so they're not gonna be crazy, crazy fast. You can take a passenger around town though, and that's part of the usefulness of these. So the Liberty has a little extra piece here. It's a fold out uh, foot peg. So we're gonna fold that out. I'll show you what that looks like to fold that out right here. And then as I jump on, I'm gonna sit on the front and then just slide back. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Now this may tip a little bit on the center stand, so we'll see if it falls back. Oh, we're pretty good. Over here, it's actually very comfortable. Scooter seats are often more comfortable than sport bike seats because they have a little bit more width to them. And you do have handles right here to hang on to for your passenger. Of course, they can also hang on to the rider. You do have a little bit of an extra panel back here. And if you're not taking a passenger, this little rack gives you a little extra length to strap something down. So if you're taking some extra luggage around, you can strap that down right there and have that space on this one. We'll show you the differences now in the Typhoon. So taking a look at the Typhoon, one thing I didn't mention when I was sitting in the driver's seat is this is a slightly softer seat to feel. So I don't know that one is more comfortable than the other, but this one does have a different feel to it for sure. This one does not have flip out uh, foot pegs. So I'll show you the foot pegs there right now as I jump on in the same way here, and we'll see if this one tips back for me. So jumping on here, put my feet back there. Again, passenger compartment, passenger seating here is very, very good. You have a wider seat than you'd have on like a typical sport bike and a very similar seating environment here. Now this one here, still has handles to grab right beside you, but it does not have the rear rack here. So you've got a little bit less space to strap stuff on without adding accessories and that kind of thing. But again, very, very good, very, very competitive. So now let's look at the storage space in these two bikes. Taking a look at the main storage space in both of these, there's a different way to get into each one. The uh, Typhoon here uses the Vespa 50cc way of doing it by having a key in the side of the seat and lifts up like this. On the Piaggio, if I turn the key to on, which I think I have it there, 
and hit the button on the dash, that releases it and allows me to get into there. So you can see a couple little differences. We'll take a little bit closer look, so stay with us if you can't see everything you want to see right now. But a couple of the differences right here is there is a bump up in this area on the Liberty S, and that's going to prevent you from taking most full face helmets in there. You can fit a full face helmet in the Typhoon, so there is a little bit of difference in space there. Also, gasoline in the rear here, gasoline in the front here, but the uh, Liberty does make up for the lack of being able to fit a full face helmet in here by having a special little lock system for a helmet like that, and I'll show you that right now. So taking a look at the Liberty here, you can see there again, there's a little bit better angle of the storage space in there. There is a little post right here, a very tiny little uh, piece right there. You can sort of see by my finger and there's one on the other side there. What that allows you to do on the Liberty only, not on the Typhoon, is it allows you to stick the D-ring of your helmet right on there and then shut the seat, which means that the D-ring of your helmet would be locked to the scooter because the scooter seat locks back down. So you are able to hang a helmet off this side and a helmet on this side on the same type of thing and allow you to have your other gear locked in there still. So there is a way to lock a helmet to this even if it doesn't fit inside, but it is something worth noting that Typhoon does not have this little post. It doesn't have that ability to do that. A lot of people assume that the only storage in a scooter is under the seat, but both of these have extra storage as well. The Typhoon is actually my last video. I didn't realize this was a storage. If you turn the key like this and press it in, you have a little small storage space up here. Enough to hold your wallet, your cell phone, stuff like that. Just a little bit of space in there. And the Liberty has a similar type system here. So I'll reach around here awkwardly, get the key to the on position, push it in and you have a much larger area. Now it looks a little larger than it is. While the door is very big, there's a segment here and a segment here, but there's, you know, there's not a whole lot of space between because the frame runs through there. So although it looks significantly larger, it is only a little bit larger than on the Typhoon. But again, it does give you that option. Now, the other thing that's really nice is you have these little clips right here. Both of these scooters have a flat floor. The Vespa, for instance, has a bump up in the middle, but that flat floor allows you to take a bag between your legs, between your feet there, and these are probably the best style clips you can get where you can hold that bag up here, whether it's a grocery bag, a backpack, something else like that. If it has a handle on top, you can lock it in there or at least secure it in there and put it between your feet. Now this on the Typhoon is a little bit lower than it is on the Liberty here, but they both have that same feature, so again, Lots of ability to take what you need with you on a daily drive. So now I'm going to take a look at the dash and the controls of each of these scooters and just trying to get the angle of this dash is a little difficult on the tripod. So I'm going to try to freehand this a little bit with my Steadicam. Hopefully this will be clear enough for you to see. So first thing I want to point out about 50cc scooters is the speedometer goes to 80 on both of these, but you're not going to find that the vehicle goes to 80 kilometers an hour, maybe downhill it will. Uh, in that 50, 60, you know, maybe 65 kilometer an hour range, that's where you're gonna be living uh, on these bikes. So very, very good for in town, all the speed you need. And the dash here is probably a little bit more old fashioned. And I say that simply because it's very rare that in any vehicle you have this sort of rolling odometer that we used to have on older vehicles. So you've got a fuel gauge on the left, you've got the, um, the uh, speedometer on the right, and I'm gonna turn the key to the on position, let me go. Actually, that is the on position. No lights on that we uh, need right now because again, there's no lights in this dash. So that's uh, sort of the basics here. You do have a signal warning light up top or signal light up top, a single signal to tell you that your signal lights are flashing, headlights and high beams to tell you that they're on. And while we're here, we'll just show you the controls as well. Let's just see if I can get down to the angle I need. There we go. So what you have here is your headlight. That's your high beam. This is just your regular uh, low beam, which is always on. And if you want to pass uh, somebody or flash to get their attention, you can tap that down to flash. There is a signal light right there, signal light right here as well, and you can tap that to, to turn it off. And then there's the horn button down here. Over on the throttle side, you have just a kill switch and the start button down there. So let's keep the same frame, go right over to the Liberty and compare the differences over here. Actually, let's just turn this one off for a second so we don't forget to do that. Click that off and we'll jump over to the Liberty. On the Liberty, same idea. We're gonna turn that key just one notch, but you're gonna see a little difference in the dash here. As we do that, you can see a little bit more modern odometer down there. Now in that odometer is not just an odometer. You've got fuel gauge, odometer, the time right now, and then you also have the ability to go through trip A, trip B, and the regular uh, odometer. So what I like to do with like something like trip B is do that for oil changes, trip A for uh, uh, tank uh, or for your tank of fuel. 
just to get an idea of how far you're going. And of course, you've got the ability to do that in the more modern dash. You also have a little bit more modern look up here. Again, same idea, speedometer goes to 80, but the vehicle will likely not. Down here, a lot of the same controls. Headlights right there, high beams. You can flash to pass down there, signals. Horn button's a little different. And this is the unlock button, which unlocks just the seat. So you can unlock that um, seat and pop it right there. And over here, the extra control is that mode button. What that does is that allows you to um, cycle through that trip A, trip B, and the regular odometer. So I want to show you the front and back of both these scooters as well because there's some differences in styling but also some practical differences. Both of these have halogen lights so you can see that the headlight down here. The difference of course is that the Liberty has the headlight up higher. Now I don't know if that makes a huge difference to most people. What it does allow you to do is that it does turn with the wheel here so if you're at a stoplight and want to really kind of get some attention I suppose you could do that if it's up higher. Now the Liberty does have and they don't show very well on camera let's just sort of see how they look like. It does have daytime running lights down the bottom so yeah you can sort of see that there. They don't film very accurately but these are nice bright white LED lights so they do give you a little bit extra daytime running light type look down there. It's probably mostly styling because again when the headlights on here you're going to be just as visible on both. Signal lights are identical between the two and really the difference you're going to see from the front practically is a, that difference in the width of that front wheel. You can kind of see that right here versus there but styling wise there are some differences like I said daytime running lights and the headlight up here. I believe if you turn this one on it does not turn the headlight on unless we start the engine and because we're indoors we're just going to not start it right now. So yeah we'll just leave that off for now uh, but there you go there are a couple of the differences in the front. Let's take a look at the rear. So taking a look at the rear of these bikes, again, you can see a little bit larger rear wheel, a little bit wider rear wheel on the Typhoon. Same signal lights between both. On this one here, the Liberty, you can see that little bit of extra rack there that you don't see on the Typhoon. Let's just go around the Typhoon, get that key turned on one more time here. And we're gonna hit the brakes on both of them here, and you'll see a little difference here. So we'll go Typhoon first, the black one on your right. You can see that light comes on there. And then the Liberty adds a little bit extra style by having a little bit extra width to their brake light there. So again, brake light, brake light, you can kind of see them there. Um, little bit of differences in style. You can decide if that makes a difference in safety. I don't think it's a real big difference in safety, but definitely a styling difference between the two. So after going through the differences of these two scooters, let's talk about which one is best for whom. And it can really depend on a lot of things. First of all, these are both basically in the same class. If you like one style better than the other, then that's probably the one for you. As far as advantages, again, fuel injection tends to be an advantage in a little bit more of efficiency. This one, although it's carbureted, doesn't have a choke or anything like that. So it used to be old bikes, you had to kind of play with them when they got started in the cool weather. This one's got an automatic choke, it takes care of that for you. So it's press the start button and they go on both of these. But again, fuel efficiency, um, overall power, it might have a slight advantage in the fuel injected model but we're not talking about significant differences here. Overall styling differences, you've got a little more, you know, squared off kind of mirrors here, sort of stylized mirrors, round mirrors there. Again, a lot of that's just style, but let's talk practicality. So if we're gonna have a little bit wider tires, wider tires tend to be good if you're driving down a little bit more of less nice roads. So things that are really rough, uh, gravelly type roads. These aren't really an off-road tread design, but having that extra width can give you a little bit more security driving in that. That being said, a lot of people like a larger diameter tire for rougher roads as well. And that's when this one, that's what this one has, especially in the front. So that uh, 16 inch wheel in the front, they all the rest of the wheels, 16 inch here, every other one of the wheels are all 14 inch diameter rims. So there is that kind of balancing out there. Narrow rims tend to allow you to have a slight bit of difference in the cornering feel, that little bit more immediacy to getting down. But again, we're talking very minor differences here. The biggest difference I would say between these two is the seat. This one is a little cushier here. This one's a little firmer. You've got more color choices over here. You've got a little bit more uh, style with the sort of contrasting stitching in here and the having the little bit of the uh, rack back here. It's very easy to add a top box as well if you want it for extra storage. And again, it just comes down to what you like better. Both of these are gonna be great for zipping around town. You can take a second person on short trips. They're both really almost identical, but you've got options between the two. So you can tell me which one you think is best for you. And again, if there's a question that I didn't answer for you that you wanna know, let me know in the comment section and I'll come back to it both in the comment section and in future videos. And again, these things are going quick. They're available here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. And I'm not just saying they're going quickly. Literally, as I was filming this exact scooter, I had to take a break 
because this one actually sold. They had someone come look at it. He agreed to take this exact one. There is another identical one over across there, and uh, there's a couple gray ones in stock. But again, these are all going fast. There's a few more Liberties in stock than there are Typhoons. So if you want a Typhoon, I would swing down here quickly. But like I said, they sell very quickly. They're very appealing to a lot of people, and especially out here in New Brunswick where you can get them uh, very simply, add an extra vehicle to your life without adding a whole lot of extra stress. Both have great fuel efficiency as well. So there you go. There's a quick review of these two. If you want to know more, let me know in the comments. And of course, swing down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals to see them for yourself. Thanks everybody for watching.